the point of unconditional love. Mm. I don't think it is quite like that in terms of, oh, I love you unconditionally. Because there's conditions in, in our relationship. I'm not going to be fucking around. You are in a relationship and you say, I love you the way you are. And you're... Oh. And... Oh. Yes. Don't get and me then that one. <laughs> you actually, that's not true because no one is okay exactly how it is right now. You always need to improve. Unless you are a god or a goddess, yeah. perfect. <laughs> Welcome to the Rebirthing Self podcast relationship series. My name is John. And my name is Joanna. And on this series, we'll talk about how to transform romantic relationships into a foundation of self-love and live up to your true potential. In this episode, we're going to talk about love. What is love? What does it mean to love? What is love in relationships? What is loving yourself? And also... And how to keep that spark alive through sex and communication. So, Joanna, we're going to be talking about love. And I think the best way to start is by asking, what is love? There's a song. <laughs> <laughs> There's, There's a many song, songs. But... Um, but I've been redefining love and distancing myself from what I was taught or watched in movies. And to me, these days, is a deep connection and is the ability to find a common ground and the ability to be with another as myself. And it is no longer those butterflies in the stomach. It's no longer that anxiety or the um, excitement. It is something much more stable than that. To me, is more like talking about long-lasting love as in being with another and growing who I am and seeing a future together and working towards that. So it's, it, it is very different from my younger teenage years where I was so much more into that energy. The experience. Yeah, the experience. Okay, so I think that's the, that's the thing that I would like to also emphasize is that, like, how do you express love? Because we say, I feel love for you. But so often, you see this in relationships, There's they say, I feel love for you, I love you. But then, how is that expressed? How is that lived? And, mm. like, how do you express love? Like, it's not just the kisses and the cuddling and which sometimes is more, that's more moments of affection. Intimacy. It's like, how do you care for the other? How mm. do you stand for the other? How do you, how will you sacrifice parts of you? What I mean by sacrifice is not... Uh, Finding compromises, no? Just, just realizing points about you that are not the best that you can be hmm. and you sacrifice them. Yeah. That's what I mean by sacrificing. It's not, Which could be actually it's a good not thing. Sacrifice. Yeah, no, it, it is a good thing yeah. because you're actually sacrificing the parts of you that are not the best of you to improve yourself and the relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is the, the, the thing that so many people, especially when we are young, because we're really after that experience, the excitement, the, you know, the butterflies in the belly. Mm -hmm. And and this, this also connects with something else that I would like to talk about, which is what is the difference between having an attraction to someone, mm -hmm. but also, and, and what is the difference to having a connection with someone? And I just want to introduce this to you a little bit further, which is, you know, you can be, you can go on the street. Now we're together, okay? And I might see other women and they are beautiful. And like visually, there's that attraction. There could be that excitement. If if I go into it, if I go into that mode of thinking and imagining, there could be, you know, y your mind will start to play scenarios on this and that. But that's superficial. That's just the energy that you, you, you that you, kind of have here within you but it's not the connection mm -hmm. that is much deeper that you actually have with someone so what i want to to say is that for people that are looking to get into a relationship you have to look much deeper 
than that superficial experience that you get of excitement and and see if there's actually a connection if there's actually a a, a possible bond a real bond in terms of what do you both want from that relationship what do you want what do you want to create for your life what are your principles do they align mm -hmm. and that is where i would say real love will flourish mm -hmm. what do you have to say yes and the word that came to my mind while you were saying that is the word unconditional so to love another person unconditional unconditionally in the sense of not expecting the return the same way, like give as you like to receive. But sometimes how we think about love is doing things to please another person. And then right. the opposite of love comes right. hate because then maybe you don't get the same way. There's a, then there's a, a frustration. There's frustration. There's a mismatch. Uh, there's expectations that are not met, which we talked in the previous episode. Yeah. And then it goes into this snowball where you lose yourself in it. And the point of unconditional is the fact that it's when well, you see, which I mean is I like... I think we need to just redefine here one thing, but go on, finish It's like point. things that I see us doing and being together and there's that point of absolute trust. Okay. And in the sense of there's going to be but things that... But the trust that, was created. Yes. Okay. But it's like... When you are not dependent on maybe those ideas that you had about what the relationship could be, and you give yourself the chance to discover mm -hmm. that person, mm -hmm. to discover your relationship. And that's, I think, that love is a constant work in progress. Yeah. A love as in the relationship based on that connection. And... And to me, one thing that is really uh, taught me about love as this amazing relationship that you can have with other human beings is parenting. And I know that maybe it's not the situation with everybody that is listening to us, but parenting teaches you a lot about that unconditional love and giving without expectation and receiving in totally different ways that you didn't expect. And, and, and it's actually the connection with human beings. You can feel... Well, be but, in love with a partner, love with your parents, with your children. But I think I, it's this ability that we have to care for each other and to expand mm -hmm. who we are and our world mm -hmm. in this uh, relationship. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a few things that I want to, I think is important to clarify, which is, first of all, when it comes to children, yes, there is that love, there's that deep connection. With, with a child, with your son or daughter, there's also the responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I think and I, I think the responsibility is, is even, it must be above the love. It must be above the liking or disliking your child because you brought this child into the world and it is your responsibility. Like that must be, I don't care if you like it or not. No, but I don't care be. if you're tired or not. I don't care if in that moment you don't love your child. You have to be responsible and you have to do what you have to do to care for, for the child. But responsibility could be okay. an act of love. Being yes. responsible okay. for okay. another. That's how okay. I see it. Okay. But, which brings me to the point of how we're going to redefine it. And But stepping back a little bit, the point of unconditional love. Hmm. I don't think it is quite like that in terms of, oh, I love you unconditionally. Because there's conditions in, in our relationship, right? There are conditions. Yeah. I'm not going to be fucking around. Do you know what I mean? Because that's a condition. Like, we're yeah. together, we're together. It's not we're together and I can go there and you can go there. No, that's that. Yeah, the, that's, that's yeah, a deal breaker. So there are conditions to our relationship. But when, once those conditions are, but I'm not talking about those, okay? I mean the other I mean. level, you But know? that's what I mean when you say, <laughs> because the relationship, there are conditions for us to be in a relationship. And we have to, our condition is our agreement. Our agreement is this is the condition. This We have decided to stick by these principles and walk this mm -hmm. and to support ourselves and each other to be the best that we can. That's the agreement. That's the, the condition, right? And I think a lot of people, a lot of people in relationships, 
uh, they have that thing of, oh, I love you so much. And it's the feeling that draws them together. But there's so many problems in the relationship. There are, there are things that is just unacceptable. It could be the way they talk to each other. It could be cheating. It could be, I mean, so many things that for us, that it would be like a deal breaker. Like this, this is not what we agreed on. Mm -hmm. and, and people will allow themselves to go in relationships without defining what the conditions are. Yeah. Okay. But then I get you your point of being the unconditional in terms of uh, within the agreement, yes. then you are unconditional. Yes. yes in, like the giving, in, the in the giving, in the being there, in the being exactly, supportive. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Okay. It's the, se the, f the fact that you know where you stand. And in my mind, I know that I'm dedicated to this relationship. Yeah. I'm not thinking about any other relationship. Yeah, so I'll yeah. give it all. Yeah. There's no back doors. Yeah. And that's where my unconditional unconditionally yes. comes. And also the fact that even when there's things that go a little bit off track mm -hmm. or we know that we can be better. But we understand it's that's part of the process. It is. And, and then back, there's okay. that unconditionality of I know we are capable of more, mm -hmm. so I'm not giving up. Yeah. That's the point of... But you also <laughs> have to see that the work, the other is working towards that. Yeah, yeah. It has to because, be mutual. Otherwise, otherwise, it will not, not work. work. And I know many relationships where this unbalance exists and it's not it's, okay. No, it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable. And, the, and you feel that imbalance when one gives much more than the other. It's not fair. And one has to take a decision, and it's so hard. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably one of the hardest thing in relationships, and love, whatever. So relationships cannot be unconditional. That's the, that's the yeah, point yeah, that yeah. I it's, to say. Okay, but mm -hmm. what I'm thinking is more like <clears throat> me in the relationship. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, for yeah, me, yeah. a relationship to work and that I call love is when there's this point of almost there's almost infinite potential. That's what I experience, and that's how, why we yeah. we match so nicely, yeah. um, because we don't limit ourselves. So, what is love? Like, as we've just mentioned, as we talk about that experience of love. Oh, I feel love for you. Like, what is it really? Because for us, it's not that experience. Mm, not anymore. Us, it was. For us, is is being there. It is being supportive. It mm -hmm. is cooking for them. It Practical. Is, it is taking care of the things in the house. Is being, if one is sick, is taking them and going to the hospital or whatever. So what, the point I want to make is that love is not a feeling. It's not an experience. It is, a, it is an action. It is a visible action that is provable in, yeah. in how how the person actually acts. Yes. And Dedication. how it's a demonstration of of the unity of the community that we also talked yes. in the previous of that communication of we agreed this is what we're going to be and do and live and then we live it. So to me that is what love is. It's not mm -hmm. the experience, it's mm -hmm. not the singing the song and oh I love you so much but then <laughs> they have a, a feeling and experience for another girl or another man. And then, ooh, sorry. Oh, I love him as well. Uh, sorry. Just going, yeah. going, and going I think by the motions of, of that. And feeling. it's how people are, you are programmed in a way. You're programmed to like certain type of girls. I mean, some, some other type of men. Um, and that's how our upbringing, depending on how society depicts this whole thing of relationships. So, we have that natural tendency to, and I think that's the, there's this working work internal that each one has to ta to do, which is a self development. Yeah, but, and love and is it, that any is relationship actually, yeah. is and, that and it's simple process. because you just don't don't go there. Yeah, you have a thought, you just no. You you look okay, you look, but you don't and imagine probably you don't. You don't start relation. to program your demise and put into action mm. that it's. And you, 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 in I think age and time teaches a lot of lessons. And those that are listening, probably you can see patterns in your previous relationships. And it's a question of asking you, do I want to do this again? Do I want to repeat the same mistakes mm -hmm. or do I want to do something different yeah, this yeah. time? And also another thing I just remember, is, which, which is the love that ex as the experience 
the emotional experience that you have of saying, oh, I love you so much, I just cannot be without you. That is not enough. Mm. Because what if that feeling and experience dies? Then, then yeah, what? Yeah, because after some time, it will probably fade away. It will fade away. And that, it's that, like, that, how are you going to stand yes, and how are you going to be true yeah, to yeah. yourself and another? And I think that deeper connection that you establish with another person also says a lot about the relationship you have with your own self, which brings the point of self-love, self-care. And if you expect someone to care more about yourself than you than you do it for yeah, your own that's self, that's another that's red an flag. That's an yeah. You're yes. Create. And there's you to create a dependency, an emotional dependency on another person. So before and then you'll going be angry in, and you're going to be blaming, blaming because, oh, you're not loving me how I want you to love yeah, me. Yeah, that's blah, blah, one blah. point that I see. Mm. And then the other point as well is when you, go in, you are in a relationship and you say, I love you the way you are. And you're. Oh. And. Oh. Yes. Don't get and me then that one. <laughs> you actually, that's not true because. Yeah. No one is okay exactly how it is right now. You always need to improve. Unless you are a god or a goddess yeah. perfect, <laughs> then I can love you as who you are. But Yeah, but there's so many lyrics. Are, uh, the, accept, the unconditional yeah. acceptance of who you are, I love you for who you are. That's, yes, that's and there's this also idea, never uh, change. I, I it's love best you. to see it as, I love the best of you. Yeah, the potential. I love the potential and what, I, what is not best of you, the, the not so good about you, I don't want to love. I don't want to accept it. Yeah. And don't be upset and the about same, it. And the same about yourself. Yeah. And you ask the other, okay, you, you like this about me? You like this about me? And the other says, oh, but you're not so good here. You're not so mm. good there. And recognize it instead of saying, oh, but I want you to love me for who I am. I want you to love me for the fucked up. The fucked up. The fucked up. <laughs> I want you to <laughs> love me for how how fucked up I am. That's, that's, that makes no sense. It's like, it's one, it's one thing is like, you can accept that that person is going through that phase in their that's life different. and you are supporting, that's different. but you don't accept less than who that person can be. Mm. And that, in, and the only time I think you will accept less is when you do it for yourself as well. When you are mm. not being the best of you, you will not push the other person. Yeah. And then yeah. you see couples that, get stuck mm -hmm. in their own personal lives, purposes. Because they're both accepting less of themselves. Yes, and then and then you feel that if you're going too far, then you're going to left the other behind. Yeah. So it's like you're pulling each other into... And that's also one reason why many relationships actually also end. Because yeah. one of the, the persons in the relationship actually starts to do some work on themselves and yeah. the other isn't. And then there's the rift starting Again. to happen. And come on, you're not coming. I, yeah. I, I just cannot stay. And it, well, it, it does make sense. Yes. Like, and there's so many, I was thinking there's so many lyrics that actually play in like weddings. Like, I love you just the way you are, never change. And it's it's actually not true. It's like, if you do that, then that's a problem. And it's not saying that we need to, it's not being hard on each other or not caring for each other. It's actually the opposite. Yeah. It's like looking at you, like saying... He's actually loving them. Yes. <laughs> If you look at yourself, like imagine that in 20, 30 years time, we would have the same arguments that we have today. Yeah. That is a problem. That's a red flag. <laughs> I don't want that You're to happen. Stuck there in <laughs> you need to evolve in the in relationship. Past 18 yes. years old. So, and, and that's like, if you look in those terms, then yes, that makes sense to have that conversation now. Let's, let's have those tough conversations Because that will bring us so much more in what we can be and what we can do and achieve in our lives. Um, so, yeah, it's like those red flags that I see and I, and I think people are even more, are more and more aware of themselves and the relationships. But I still see a lot of couples, friends of mine that go into these traps and it's important to to realize that you can do things differently. So what do you have to say about those that are looking for the one? Finding yeah. the one. How do you go about that? The desire? Mm -hmm. well, the idea as well. Sometimes you are actually already in that relationship. The potential is already there. But there has to be the conversation. And, that and the commitment that the, of and, both. Of both. To be the one for each other. Yes. 
Yes, and, and to not just um, pretend that everything is okay and let time take over. I would say that there is no the one. There are many the ones. Mm. There are many potentials. Only if they actually got their act together. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sure I and you, you could be with many other men and I could be with many other women. And have for a as match. long for as long and and be good and create an amazing yeah. life and relationship for as long as we were to stick to the principles of bettering ourselves yeah. of going into the relationship and and see and understanding that the relationship is going to be a mirror of the yeah. things that we have to face exactly. to better ourselves and actually work to towards that goal mm -hmm. and in that sense many people would be the one mm -hmm. So the question is not, uh, am I going to find the one? No. Are you going to go into a relationship to create the one? The one relationship, the one, right, not yes. the, the one person that is going to mm -hmm. be Yeah, the it one will be very, you. I mean, imagine these <laughs> 7 billion people in the world and then there's a one person <laughs> that you could match of with. Course. I mean, that would be yeah, nonsense, no, you know? Crazy. And it's good that it's not like that because you could have really good relationships with friends and business partners, you know? So yeah. these kind of relationships and agreements can have, it's beyond just this couple, oh, yeah. parent, uh, a partnership, marriages. Yeah. Because that, you that's should more, do an that, agreement with a partner, a business partner. Yeah. That is so important yeah. as well. Obviously, the relation, the intimate relationship, yeah. the romantic relationship, there's other aspects to mm -hmm. What comes from it? Yes. The sex, the intimacy, the children, yeah. being together, living together. So that's a dynamic that has to be worked out and, and, and improved. And it's very and, specific and to that. And is very specific to having yeah. that with just one person. Uh, but it's then you, yeah. it's, it's Even relationships. Friendships. With, with, that's, yeah. that's what I wanted to say, having friends and business partners. And, and not going into it in terms of... Um, Is this going to work out or is this a good friend? But actually also develop the relationship mm -hmm. to understand that it's not something that has to be stuck there. Yeah. That uh, both can actually improve yeah. the relationship and when there's friction in relationships. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've, I've, I've noticed on um, a few videos that I've watched of especially women that um, it's really traumatic even for some, the fact that they had a really good friendship with another, with a female friend. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, they broke the relationship. They, they couldn't. They stopped talking to each other. They disconnected, and that was like hard for them because mm -hmm. there was a connection there. They were good friends for many years, and some fight, whatever, and the relationship broke. Mm. So that's also another point of looking into yourself in the mirror of that relationship yes. and seeing how you can actually improve and what went wrong in that relationship. And learn from it. What is the forgiveness yeah. that is needed? What was the self-honest point that was missed? Where was the deception? Where were the lies? And, mm -hmm. and you know, you could always come back together if you can get back to that point of forgiveness. And Yeah, but those are... I and think that's those love. Are, that's love That is. Well. And in those friendship. are the challenges, I think. It's that hard... The hardest part is when you are facing yourself, especially when you're facing old habits, old patterns. Like, a, an example, my relationship with time, and I think, I don't know if we covered that in the last episode, but like, hmm. my family, we are not very, we don't punctual. stick with, punctual, punctuality is not our biggest um, strength. Um, and with you, it's different. So, Since we're t ever since we got together that I had to push myself to actually be punctual and to be on time and I and those are pro those are all usually the our arguments are based on that is when I yeah. say that I'm going to be at there at a given at a given time and I'm not there and then this whole thing starts so I have to face myself in these old habits of yeah. mine every yeah. time yeah and it's like that point that's hard and you will find many different examples where when you are in a close relationship with a person yeah. and you go past that superficiality, yeah. then these are the points the that you problem. need yeah. to change. And it will take the ego, it will take time, effort, dedication. And, yeah. and But there comes also the 
everything, the good out of it yes. is when you actually realize, wow, I didn't know I could be punctual. Mm. Oh, it actually feels good. Wow, what a relief. <laughs> I can be there before actually the time and I can make so much more. And my and I am actually not better at doing what I'm supposed to be doing because I don't have that stress over yeah, me anymore yeah, yeah. or the pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you find new things about yourself. Yeah, yeah. And that's where you want to go. Yeah. Definitely. So this there are other examples, but um, that to me is like, don't give up when things get harder because yeah. that could be the the flipping side is yeah, when yeah. you go actually you go past the like picking up the surf when you go and you get all this big waves but then you actually go past the how do you say it in it's the surf the wave breaking the yeah. wave breaking how you pass that and then it was like smooth waters and you can yeah. actually enjoy yeah but you have to yeah yeah paddle 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 paddle, paddle. yes before I continue, I just want to make a quick announcement regarding the book that I'm just about to finish, which I hope to release sometime in December, about this process of rebirthing the self. So if you're enjoying this video, if you're enjoying this podcast, uh, this book is, is all about this and, and much more. So you're going to get a lot of value from it. Therefore, uh, just make sure to follow me on YouTube or Twitter or on Instagram for the updates of the book. Okay, back to the podcast. I would like to go into the next point, which is how to... Keep the flame alive. Mm. <laughs> we're not so well. We're good at it, but uh, sometimes we don't get a lot of time dedicated to just no, our intimacy. But it's not just that. Okay. <laughs> well, that's one point. So one point is sex. Yes, I talk or about intimacy, it. Just, not just sex, but like just having. Yeah, I thought you were mentioning that specifically. No, even sometimes just okay. having. Uh, that's what I wanted to go. Just so the how, do, how do you how do you how do you <laughs> keep have, the relationship going? Yeah. How do you keep it dynamic? How do you keep it interesting and happy as well? Right. So tell me. You tell me. You start. Well, I just finished talking. A, a good lot. thing to do is start a podcast, right? You yeah, can start a no. podcast with your partner, and there you have your weekly yeah, getting catch together. Up. <laughs> this is our weekly catch up, guys. To talk about stuff. <laughs> <laughs> sort out our issues on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, 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 it's good. It's the <laughs> second episode. We'll see how many we're going to do. <laughs> no, more. but okay. So I think it's important to point out one thing, which is there's a relationship before children and there's a relationship after children. Uh, it's two different worlds. And especially when we're talking about the point of keeping the spark alive, keeping the relationship, you know, the flame in not in a sexual sense but in a connection sense a communication being, uh, going so and interested about each other's lives and tell me about it before what did we do what could we do we've been trying different strategies like sometimes like okay every day let's stick like half an hour catch up mm. um I think, well, can I remember something? in london we used to say okay every, like or at least on a weekly basis have some time to talk about each other mm -hmm. points yeah Another thing we did, which I liked a lot, was after dinner we would watch, I don't know what was the series, uh, but together. we just watched one episode of something together. Yeah. And that was just a good moment to just be there, yes. relaxing at the end of the day, you know, just being next to... Yeah, to sharing partner, something with each other. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now with children, for me, it's important when we have the time, just the four of us, because we tend to do a lot of things. Like when I'm with the kids, you were working. When you are the kids, I'm working. So... It's important to have like maybe Saturday morning or Sunday morning, just the four of us doing something together like we've been doing. But then um, when is there time for the two of us? But for the two of us, it is important to find an ske early schedule with the kids, like early dinner, going to bed early, and then you have maybe two hours in the evening just to relax and to have a moment of intimacy without being too tired. Yeah. So that is like an ideal scenario. It doesn't happen always. Um, but that is something that we notice that is starting to work yeah. for us. Uh, but it also now depends. Now with, with Bernard going to school. Yeah, it also depends the age. Depends on the age of the children, yeah. of course. If they're too baby, you cannot do this. But um, I, I think it's important to keep the interest alive. As in, I'm interested in what you do in your own day-to-day professional mm -hmm. career and you as well in terms of asking me okay how was your day how are you or sometimes you don't even have to ask you notice that the other person mm. 
is being a little bit rough. Maybe you're talking a little bit louder to the kids and you might ask, hey, How was your day? Is, it, is everything okay? <laughs> What happened? Because yeah. I notice you're different. So that to me is a point of doing that regular catch up. I mean, it's not like every time you see, oh, how are you? What's going on? Mm -hmm. No, but it's more, it's, it's, there's an interesting thing, especially with women, I think we are a little bit more outspoken. So sometimes I say to Jean, hey, how was your day? And then he asked me, hey, Joanna, what do you want to tell me about your day? Because it's more, I'm asking because I want to start the conversation because I want him to say, hey, tell me about your day. Uh, or other times I might ask, okay, do you have a moment to talk with me? Because you might be busy. I know I don't want to interfere with your schedule, but it is important. And to me, it is very important to have that regular communication because I know you're a little bit more introverted and you deal with your own things. But to me, Speaking with another person is almost like going to a therapist. It's like just hearing just hear me yourself. talking about that, yeah. it helps to have that cross-reference and mm -hmm. you may ask nice questions. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that is like, okay, I haven't thought about that. Okay, maybe this brings an interesting perspective into what I'm going through. Um, but to me these days, that connection I, I is really... This is, this is interesting to hear yeah. because... The question is, how do you keep the connection going in the relationship? And from your side, mm -hmm. as, as a female, it has a lot to do with communication, mm, with yeah. talking, with listen to me, with uh, just ha spending a moment to communicate. Yeah. Hmm? For men, or at least for me, I really do see sex as like almost everything that I need in terms of, of connecting with you, in terms of... of um, Of, of really feeling um, attracted, not attracted, but that I want to be with you, that I want to, um, not to be with you together in a relationship, but spend time with you. Like, yeah, like that moment of intimacy that yes. you cannot do with anybody else. We're yes. talking, you can yes. do with anybody yes. else. Yes, and I think that looking back at times where there were longer periods of time, where there was no no sex like especially for example most recently with with Mariana being you know the first few months after Mariana was was born uh, there wasn't a, there wasn't much at, if anything at all I don't quite remember but but I did experience that uh, like Almost there was rejection a, it wasn't a rejection but like I felt a bit more um distant distant from you yes mm. So you feel as if sex is actually the physical yes. coming together. Yes. It's actually yes. the connection. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But to me, it it's more... It keeps me wanting you. It keeps me wanting to be with you. It keeps me wanting um, to have sex with you, to be attracted to you in that sense as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so And I, I see think that. it's really important. Yeah. I see that. But for example, for me, I will. I'm, it's really hard for me to come in, to be um, very expressive in my sexual... Exper uh, expression. expression or be very present if I have things in yeah. my mind bugging me that I yeah. need to sort out. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm not relaxed, it's then mm -hmm. I, it's not the best of me. So that's why I think there's this the foreplay. foreplay that is really important. The foreplay could be... Foreplay for Joanne is a massage. <laughs> yes, a massage like really <laughs> groundness and then maybe do it Can catch up on things that are really that I need to sort out and then I'm available yeah but that's something that you yeah, understand it, it's a relationship that is established with your partner yeah, yeah. it could be different it's, like it, and natural. the good thing and this ladies this is super nice is like imagine that you have something that it's still to be sorted and you go through that or you, what do you mean still to, to like it doesn't that you you're you're, you're worried you worried about okay, something okay, okay. But then you give it a go, you go into sex and you have a great time. And I had already answers uh -huh. after an orgasm. It's like it releases parts of the brain. I don't know, like the scientific behind it. But actually, you notice that after, after orgasm, you actually more yourself. <laughs> meaning that the answers come yeah. more easily, depending on it, what the problem you're facing. But I would say that has to do with the fact that When you're concerned, when you're thinking too much about problems that you have or stressing and anxious, da, 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 you're too much in your mind, you're mm, too much thinking, yes. it's too much emotion. And if you push through that, you know, to put yourself into 
the physical into the physical of having sex mm. in, in that moment of being vulnerable and just just doing it and um, having that physical experience mm -hmm. in the physical and moving and just being there yep. and breathing also yes the breathing the breathing uh, that puts you more into the body. Yeah. And it kind of you disconnect a little bit from all that worry, all that concern, all that stress. Yeah. And then you also, I would say, some of that energy as the stress and anxiety that is accumulated in you. It releases it as well. It re is actually released yeah. with the orgasm. And the sweating as well. When okay. you sweat. And which is similar to going to into sports. exercise. Yeah. Okay. So the endorphins, all that stuff starts to And the to, cortisol to work releases. So that is why probably yes. after sex, after the orgasm, you're more ah okay. You see things with a different, yeah. with a different uh, perspective mm -hmm. and, and answers. But it's important that each them. one will identify points that might be holding you back, and other times just give it a go and then surrender to that moment. So to give <laughs> an, an advice for the couples, yeah, which is men listen to your woman, woman. Give sex to your man. <laughs> Or be, be available. Be Make yeah. yourself... Because generally speaking, men are more up for it like quite yeah. easily and women have to just push a little bit to get to, to that point of being vulnerable and open to, to do it. But yeah, it's giving and receiving. There you go. Mm -hmm. And that's love. <laughs> As well. Yeah. Okay. I think that was good. Shall we stay here for this episode? Um, yeah, do you have I something think... else to say? No, I'm already thinking that I um, okay. think our children are already. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> That's it then. Attention. That was yes. good. So we'll see you next week for another episode. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>